was a driver. Uh, are or it was a driver? I am. You. Okay, <laughs> she is a driver at uh, X44, um, a 6X Dakar finisher, and the first woman to win the FIA uh, World Cup for cross country rallies. And Stephanie Travers is an associate sporting director at X44 and a former Petronas trackside fluid engineer and the first black woman on F1 podium. So thank you guys for being here with us today. And I'm going to start asking you uh, some questions and then we're going to have a little bit of time to Q&A in the end. So for us to start, uh, both of you currently work in the motorsport industry, but in different capacities. So I would like for you to start uh, telling a little bit about your role and how you entered into the STEM field. Christina? Yes, uh, I started very, very young. Uh, when I was four years old, my father put me a little motorbike in my house uh, because he loves the, the motorsport. Mm -hmm. And I started very little with the motorbike and then uh, at the age of six, more or less, uh, he gave me his car for the first time. And I started to compete at the age of 18 uh, because in this uh, time I am a little bit shy. And I don't see a lot of girls in the, in the motor uh, sport. Mm -hmm. So I, I am a little bit scary of the world, but then uh, when I was 18 years old, I started to compete in, in, Span yes, in Spain in cross country rallies. And I competed in Dakar for the first time when I was uh, 24 years old. And after that, I take confidence and I continue to compete. I, my, my best year, more or less, was uh, last year because we, we won the World Cup, as you said. Mm -hmm. And also, we finished third in, in Dakar. So it's a life, an entire life uh, involved in motorsport. And I am a, a very passionate of, of the motor world. Nice. And you, Stephanie? So I've always been a really huge motorsport fan. It's something that's in the blood of my family and we all love watching races and analyzing them together. So as I was growing up, my parents really valued education and it was really important for our family. So they really pushed us in, in that area. And I knew that I wanted to study engineering. So I pursued a, a career in engineering and chose STEM subjects all the way through school and got a lot of support from my parents to ensure that I achieved a high grade in those all the way through school to enable me to do engineering. Um, what I would call my break into motorsport was back at the end of 2018, Petronas launched a global talent search and I went up against 7,000 people across the world for my role as a trackside fluid engineer. Um, I, I'm proud to say that in 2019 I started with the Mercedes Formula One team and worked with them for the last three years and that was an amazing experience traveling the world doing something that I loved and utilizing all the education from university. Um, last year that role ended and Sir Lewis Hamilton offered me the opportunity to be an associate sporting director for his team X44 and I was just so happy as my ultimate goal is to one day hopefully become a team principal. And this role enables me to get that experience within the business side of things. So I'm really uh, enjoying the role at the moment. Amazing, so inspiring. And well, I'm sure that you guys have faced barriers along this way. So Stephanie, I would like for you to tell us what barriers did you face? And if you think that as a woman, you had to, uh, work harder, you know, to get where you are today? For me, uh, one of the barriers I would say is representation. Um, Sir Lewis Hamilton being the first black driver in Formula One was such an incredible achievement. Mm -hmm. And that was the moment where I realized um, that that space is welcoming for someone like me. But even today, there's not many black women within Formula One or black engineers that you can look up to. So the sector needs to have more people that are that representation. Um, after going on the podium in the 2020 Syrian Grand Prix, that was a historic moment and something that I will treasure for the rest of my life. But what really meant the most to me was having so many young people from around the world of all different demographics reaching out to me and saying that they were inspired by my journey. So I really hope that more people follow in my footsteps and become engineers to have that representation for young women and young black children that are out there that one day dream of being an engineer. Amazing. And you, Christina, <coughs> what barriers did you face? Yes, for me, the worst thing uh, from the beginning when I started to, to find a sponsor because 
the motorsports sometimes it's difficult to find partners and everything because you need you need to to have no. At the beginning, I try to to combine uh, the partners and the people don't believe in me. So for me, it was the worst thing uh, because you need to to work much more harder than maybe a, a male. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's like this, uh, each year is better because uh, as you can see, each day more girls are involved in motorsport and it's more normal than if you see one girl in, inside the, the motorsport. But for me, I think it's the, the worst thing is, is it, it was uh, the, the people don't believe in me. But uh, that's why I try to, to have another way to, to make my future. I study in the university uh, dentistry and I have my own <laughs> clinic. So I have the both uh, future... The backup yeah, part. Two okay. ways to, to work. And uh, it's like this, the motorsport sometimes is is a short life, but uh, at the moment I'm happy because I am very active in, yeah. in all of the visibility and everything, and nice. each year is better. And, well, talking about STEM, it's important to remember that uh, a lot of different people can face those barriers, so people of color, people that come from families with low income, people with disabilities, so uh, Steph, I would like for you to tell us, like thinking about this equal access in these fields, uh, what value an intersectional approach can bring? An intersectional approach is so important because we're all made up of various different things yeah. and every single demographic will have their own barriers to entry. So it's really important for us to understand what those are. And um, take me for an example, I'm black and I'm a woman and both of those have their own individual barriers. And if you want to reach black people, it's really important to consider the specific barriers that black women face, or else you'll end up just attracting black men. Mm -hmm. Sir Lewis Hamilton's commission found that boys are more likely to consider engineering as a career than girls of the same age. But then, as young black boys get older, they become disillusioned by it. And so with that, and if we want to attract black women, we need to firstly understand why are girls not considering engineering as an option, and also why are young black people disillusioned along the way. Yeah. And Christina, what do you think about this intersectional approach? Yeah, for me, if I put the, all the focus in the problem, for me it's the, the childhood education. Um, for me it's an important point because if you put more invest in, in the education and you can have kids with, uh, from the beginning with uh, equal values and uh, in the future it will be much more equal uh, with much more values and uh, for me I think we need to invest uh, in the education because in Spain for example the politicians are like decrease the money on education and it makes me very sad because for me, the, the most important thing is to have a, a good uh, future and to, to, pour to put more visibility and more energy in the problems uh, in today because you can see all the problems and we need to, to put more visibility on the problems to, to have an idea and to put solutions. Yeah, perfect. And well, you both being involved in the motor sport industry, um, what direction do you think this industry is going in terms of diversity and inclusion? And what do you think needs to be done so we can um, ensure that we have greater inclusivity of people from marginalized backgrounds? Yes, for me, uh, in my case, um, the steps that we are taking is in the right direction. direction. Because uh, in my case, as I said, um, one time in my life, one of the keys of my race career, it was uh, an event uh, organized by FIA uh, Commission, the Women in Motorsport, because uh, they give us the opportunity to go to an event for all, all the women. Um, we learn about the cross-country rallies, we learn about the legends of motorsport, and they make um, like more confidence in our lives and most of the girls that uh, he went there uh, now they are in extreme with me 
and there is a positive uh, change and a positive event for the future because also Xtreme, for example, uh, have um, unequal um, drivers because it's mandatory to have a male and a female driving oh. at the same time. Okay. And for example, for me, it's an incredible experience because I shared the car with Sebastian Loeb. This is the, one of the best drivers in, the, in rallies. And uh, for me, it's an incredible opportunity to, to have visibility, to, to increase our, uh, our lives and to share a good moments and also to be part of X44 uh, with Lewis Hamilton and mm -hmm. all of these things as an incredible opportunity for me and also makes me more confident and makes me more, um, with more power to continue. No? Perfect. And what about you, Steph? I think the sector is definitely heading in the right direction. Uh, for me personally, 2020 was that pivotal moment and the We Race As One initiative was launched by Formula One and many of the drivers supported uh, Lewis and how outspoken he was and a, a lot of them took the knee. And since then, so many initiatives have been put in place to help and uh, improve the diversity and inclusion of, of motorsport. Um, for example, Formula One have some scholarships that are going out to underrepresented people to ensure that they can pursue degrees that could ultimately land them a career within motorsport. There's FIA Girls on Track uh, that's out there that inspires young girls to have a look and see what a career in motorsport could be for them and the different career options that there are out there. And then with Extreme E, we have Racing for All that's just been launched this week. And every single team will be able to take an additional person to work on the car that has come from an underrepresented background and that doesn't have a lot of experience working in motorsport. Because one of the things about entering Formula One and some of the other series is they require you to have some experience, but it's not easy to get that experience at an entry level. So now to have that platform where you're providing people with experience, they get to travel the world with us and go to all the extreme races and get hands-on experience on the cars and they can use that to then further themselves and hopefully also reach their dreams of getting into Formula One or into Dakar and into other sectors of Mexico. Perfect. And well, before we head to the Q&A session, I would like for you to give um, an advice for people that want to go uh, into the STEM uh, field and especially for women. I would say um, for me, it's just to really work hard in your younger years in life and focus on your education so you have that foundation for later on. And it's not the be-all and, and end-all if you don't do well in your GCSEs or your A-levels. There's many other options of getting into motorsports. You can go through apprenticeships, for example. But the most important thing is believing in yourself. And I'm very fortunate that I've had a very supportive family. And they've always pushed me to believe in myself and my abilities. And that's helped me. I got really deterred when I was applying for the Petronas um, role because of the word global. I knew I was going up with, against people from all over the world and there was one stage where I wanted to drop out. And just those words of encouragement that came from family that really made me believe in myself and know that I'm capable to be in that space. If you know that, you just have to set your mind to it and try as hard as you can. And it doesn't matter how many times it takes you to achieve that dream. It's just about the effort you put in and what you learn at every single barrier that you may face and you utilize that to, to reach your full potential and just reach for the stars. But do what you're passionate about because you spend so much of your time working. Yeah. And you, Christina? Yeah, for me, more or less the same. Uh, as Steph say, um, for me, the most important thing is believe in yourself. Uh, fight, uh, fight for your dreams. But fight hard because uh, the way is not too easy. Uh, sometimes you have uh, hard uh, moments, uh, moments of destroy everything mm. but you need to follow your dreams you need, you need to 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 hard to work hard yeah. and to try to to be yourself all the time because sometimes you you are going to have Get some lost people in the yeah, way. some people uh, disturbing you but you need to to be uh, clever and constant yeah. and with resilience okay perfect so now guys we can open so you can ask questions to our panelists. If you ladies could change one thing in motorsport to make it easier for women to break through into it, what would it be? 
who wants to start? <laughs> for me, I think the for me the, the the best thing it will be not not need to speak about these things, no? Because if in the future we don't need to speak about the, all these things, is is that the the it's the just things, natural, yeah. right? Yes. So for me, is the try to work hard now because uh, for me, I, as 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 I said uh, before, the education is the most important thing, and I try to to speak to schools and everything and to try to invest in, in this part and, and maybe in the future we don't need to talk about the, the problems. Yeah. And you, Stephanie? Definitely agree with Christina, but it's also about having an environment where everyone feels like they belong and it's important that the teams are welcoming women and that's happening more and more every single day. So you're seeing more women in the paddock and um, more women are integrating within teams and just that alone will change demographic in the future. Perfect. Okay, we have another one. I have a question about mentorship. I would like to know if either of you guys have had the chance to have a mentor uh, in the motorsport and what was that impact on you guys in terms of feeling like you had a place and feeling empowered in what you're doing? And how do you think it's something that is... Why we have actually? So for me, um, I didn't really have a mentor in motorsport before I entered. But from the moment I entered, I was embraced with open arms from the entire Mercedes Petronas Formula One team. And I built various relationships there and got advice from various different people. But the person that I became closest to in terms of my career and the direction I want to take my career in would have been uh, Sir Lewis Hamilton. He was very interested in what I'm doing, where I see myself in the future, and, and has invested a lot in me. And I think through the hard work that I did within Formula One and showcasing that I can belong in that space and I, I worked hard to support the team, it ended up in him offering me a role in his, in his team and supporting me on my journey throughout um, motorsport and hopefully achieving my ultimate goal of becoming a team principal. So I think he's probably the key person in motorsport that supported me from the day I entered. Yeah, for me also, uh, now I am very happy because we have a lot of support from a lot of people and uh, each day we have more uh, things to do uh, as a woman in, inside the motorsport. We can inspire some people. Uh, as um, Steph said, uh, the things are changing, so we are here and we can uh, follow our dreams free. free. Nice. Someone has another question? Okay. Nice. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure listening to you both. Like, it's okay. My question is directed at you, Christina. I um, know you dropped very subtly that you um, studied dentistry uh, and you're also pursuing your career within motorsport. I just wanted to understand how you were able to balance the both because that's a yeah. massive feat. Um, so if you could just please dive into that a bit, a bit more, that would be great. Yeah. It's Perfect. a good question. <laughs> Uh, yes, now my 80% of the time is for racing, but um, I try to, to be on the way of my university career. I, yes, I study dentistry, but then I, my speciality is uh, orthodontic, uh, with braces and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can organize my, my time, uh, one week per month, more or less, to, to see all my patients. Uh, each month I travel to my city, to my dental clinic, to see all the patients. And like this, uh, I can organize all the year, one time uh, per month we go, we see my patients and I learn a little bit <laughs> about the teeth and I come back to my other life, <laughs> raising life. It's uh, different but it's interesting to, to explain some people and also my patients because sometimes come to me and are you the girl who drives in the... <laughs> and I say, yes, it's me. <laughs> but it's, it's funny, but it's, it's good to, to, to explain public. to the people and to the kids. Uh, because that you can actually do yeah, because both, right? It's possible to share two passions uh, if you, you organize to yourself you properly. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much for being with us today and for the people on the digital platform also. Christina, Stephanie, thank you so much for being here with us.